now I know what you're thinking. This is the wildest thing to start off with for a video. But guys, Brown Dust 2 devs are cooking, bro. Oh my god. Guys, we got to talk about this, man. 1.5 Annie is up and coming, and the stuff that they've gone over and revealed is insane. We'll get back to this, but my god. We got more stuff to go over here in the uh, images, but let's... Let me calm down. <laughs> Let me calm down because, man, there's there's a lot of stuff to go over. So here's what we're going to do, guys. We are going to go over this. I'm going to try and summarize some of the things here, but I highly, highly suggest you guys go ahead and read it and everything on to, uh, or basically read everything in detail. But let's get started because there's a lot of information in this dev note, surprisingly. So we've got a lot of things to cover. So firstly, the... Um, it starts out with Jun Hee Lee, and they actually address some of the issues with the recent skill cutscene. So they mention Magic Bow Elenir. So if we read, recently many players have expressed their disappointment in the quality of the skill cutscenes. First, I fully understand your disappointment in piercing Magic Bow Elenir skill cutscene quality. I apologize for our lack of care in tailoring our services to your needs in this regard. I must admit, we were in a rush uh, to update the existing skill cutscenes as soon as possible. However, our circumstances cannot be an excuse. I sincerely apologize again to players who have been waiting eagerly for the 1.5 Annie update. First off, I'm glad that they admitted the truth. It was rushed. I'm glad that they realized the cutscene is kind of boring and basic. Um, and it's very important because cutscenes mean a lot to this game. It's one of the main reasons that people play. So if the cutscenes aren't good, it, it's, I mean, people will definitely voice their opinion, right? So let's continue. We have discussed with the illustration and directing teams to improve the cutscenes that cause complaints. As for Elenir, we will improve her scene's presentation, such as by adding a background or removing the doll. Please do both. <laughs> Please do both. We will also adjust Luvencia's cutscene and change Levia's body shape to match her figure. Now, for those of you that don't know, uh, Levia's OG skin, her Knight of Jealousy, this is her body type, right? So she's got like thick legs, curvy body, breasts are like kind of medium sized. So in the actual cutscene here, if we take a look, as you can see here, her breasts are huge which me personally it's not a big deal for me but i could understand if people want everything to match the body of the characters right i get it cool so i think what they're going to do is just slightly reduce her breast size here but everything else is going to stay the same now for the luvencia cutscene um i don't know what they could change here maybe they add more um fan service shots maybe they'll do that i'm not too sure what the complaints were um well actually I, I probably do if anything probably not sexy enough which is fine either way look i i don't really care if you can make it sexier then cool so we'll see what they adjust with the luvencia maybe they'll do more camera angles or something like that but yeah magic bow elenir i mean she looks great but dude they the the pink background and then the random her random bear just blocking everything yeah let's uh let's let's switch that up let's change that okay but uh yeah overall pretty good so let's let's keep it going uh we are well aware of the value that skill cutscenes hold for you the players of brown us too when it comes to cutscenes we will be meticulous uh <clears throat> we will take meticulous care of various elements such as motion effects body shapes and balance as well as quality now let's move on to the update so i'm gonna run through this really quickly um for those of you that don't know these are all rerun packs so nightmare winter this is coming up the event pack um they also mentioned for nightmare winter that uh well let before we talk about that so here are the characters in nightmare winter nightmare bunny eclipse masquerade cilia anti-dystopia diana and stray cat row these are all coming back all of them they will also be distributing a plus five stray ray cat or stray cat row like they did last year so all of these are getting rerun so for those of you that have been waiting to get these skins uh these costumes now are the time now's the time right uh there's something i like to add and they quickly explain here apparently there was like some theory between click clack summer or, or click click summer and nightmare winter of them being like related in terms of story and timeline wise but the 
dev reiterates that it, they're both <clears throat> excuse me they're both in parallel universes so there's no relations here so if you guys want to pause you can read this if you want but it's i think it's really like a not a big deal here so there's going to be a rerun of the event marry me this is going to be Rafitia. so we already knew about this um she will be a rerun character as well as her event coming up too they talk about the fiend hub boss up and coming they are rerunning the Bluebeard Fiend Hunt boss. <clears throat> and they also, it looks like they added some patterns here. So it says like the boss now has a pattern of applying shield to itself. The quicker you attack, the shield consecutively, the more damage you can deal. So <clears throat> they also talk about other Fiend Hunt bosses. And I guess they added some new things to them as well. So I'll probably briefly touch over it, but uh, you guys get the, the concept. And we'll, we'll learn when it actually comes out. So here's some new artwork for Firework Memories. This is actually a really nice piece of artwork. I like this a lot. Um, so Firework Memories is rerunning. EON has been changed from, I believe, yeah, from light to water type. So that'll be rerunning again. And now <clears throat> the main stuff. This is exciting. So November 21st, Queen of Signature Michaela rerun of Pure Right Blessing Rafitia. We knew that. Two new costumes, which we know one of them, new employee Nebris, but we have Win Dancer Fanica. Now, as you can see, new employee Nebris is actually going to be running for 14 plus 7 days. They mention it uh, a little bit later here, but the reason being is because they're celebrating the new interactive content. We are getting Anti Dystopian Diana rerun for 14 days, and then to be announced are going to be two new costumes along with the rerun for Bunny and Adventurer Diana. Um. <clears throat> Masquerade Celia will come on the 26th. So, let's talk about these pickups, man. So, here are the cutscenes. Uh, well, the still images for the cutscenes here. So, Michaela, I mean, do I really need to say anything? Just, just thick, bro. We finally get another new image of uh, Nebris from her cutscene. She looks great. Now, when was it Wind Dancer? Yeah, Wind Dancer Vanica looks amazing. Um, I cannot wait to see how she's going to look in this skill cutscene, but I really love her design here. 10 out of 10. I've got no complaints. I'm actually super excited because I love, love Vanica as a character. Um, <clears throat> so they kind of go over their skills. We already know about Michaela and Nebris, but when there's a Vanica as a magic DPS and supportive wind property, she makes the enemy vulnerable to wind property as she deals damage. Okay. <clears throat> and then I think right here, what did they say? So for the fiend hunt here, uh, they quickly mention about making changes here. So there's a preparation period for fiend hunt, and then there is <clears throat> the day the fiend hunt actually starts. And there have been costumes that have come out the day that a fiend hunt actually starts. And what they want to do is they want to make sure that everybody has enough prep time for the fiend hunt. So players have pointed out that they feel significant pressure to prepare all strategies on the first day when a new pickup appears during the hunting period. And we agree with this opinion. As pickup costumes greatly impact clearing uh, Fiend Hunt, we will release them during the preparation period from now on to provide you with enough uh, practice before Hunt. So they're just going to change the way they do scheduling, which I am completely fine with. Um, yeah, I've got no issues. <clears throat> so they also are in discussion of making gameplay more varied for Fiend Hunt, which I am 100% with because, you know, they'll highlight characters for Fiend Hunt, right? Like... If your character does uh, dot damage, they'll have a bunch of effects that relate to dot damage, right, for that fiend hunt. But as we go on over the years for Brown Dust 2, we're going to have so many characters that you might as well start diversifying different strategies anyway, right? So I'm actually all for having more strategies for fiend hunt. That's great. Uh, we finally get the official season starting for Tower of Salvation. They have changed the target score from 2 to 15 billion. This is probably based off of feed, uh, feedback and shit that they've seen uh, when people play Tower of Salvation. And then they've also um, updated the rewards here. So you can take a look. 200 to 300 refining crystals. 1 to 150 awakening elixir. Nice little change. Um, they're also going to be making other improvements with low usage relics. Those will be buffed. Um, effects of certain choices in the event room will be buffed. Requirements will be added for score bonus achievements. Skill specs of certain monsters will be changed. So that will be the efficiency, uh, the official season start of the Tower of Salvation. Now, 
For guild raids, some nice changes here. Soon you will be able to check each guild member's recent guild battle records according to their dates in the guild. The battle records will clearly display the played level information. You will also be able to sort your guild members based on the contribution rate of the guild page and check their battle records from previous season. Additionally, the UI regarding the repel feature will be, improv uh, will be improved. When you press the repel button, you will be able to see which guild member increased the repel stat at which level. Great. Fantastic. All these changes I love, right? So guild, guild rate is getting some very good changes and I'm all for it. They also go over the ruler of darkness, the fourth guild raid boss. Uh, I'll talk about this in another video when we get to it. But, you know, if you want to know, just pause it. You can take a look at what he does or hints at what he does. Now, 1.5 five anniversary plans guys the moment you've all been waiting for the 1.5 anti update uh, will be on tuesday december 17th and a pre-registration period will last for two weeks from december 3rd to 17th so what this pre-registration is is they typically have like that you give your email on a website they'll make a website to prepare for this whole um anniversary and what they do on that website is they give you a list of all the new costumes, uh, the cutscenes, the tickets that you'll be getting. You know, a lot of a lot of cool stuff there. Wallpapers that they'll be giving away. So they did it last year. They're going to do it again for this year too. So pretty cool. I always liked it. Also, they will be doing special live streams for Taiwan and Japan for each region. Now, reason they're probably doing this is they've been advertising a lot in Taiwan and Japan. They already did a event in Korea for their first Danny, so they're trying to really spread the word in Taiwan and Japan about this game, which honestly go for it. Good for them if they can actually get more players to come in. Um, okay, we are finalizing details, but here's a sneak peek of some images under development. As many of you have high hopes for this update, we will give you more details for 1.5 Annie. So, already. <laughs> oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Now, I'm going to let you guys guess in the chat. I am privy to some information, so I can't really say anything. Um, however, wow. <laughs> Be excited. Be very, very excited. Now, let's uh, continue here if we scroll down. So this right here, I can already tell you this is definitely like a cyberpunk theme, 100%. I think this has to do with it as well. I don't know if this is part of the story or whatever, but... Uh, this is definitely a cyberpunk event, and if I had to predict, this is probably going to be for next year. Right after the Annie, this is going to probably be happening, if I had to guess. Now, keep it going. Boom. Now, I'm not going to lie, guys. And again, this is just me being honest. Again, I'm privy to information, but... Honestly, I think a lot of you can guess who this is. Uh, um... But I'm, I'm going to keep quiet. I'm going to let you guys guess in the comments. There's probably only two choices that come to your head. So it's definitely either one of those two. But this is going to be one of the new bunny costumes for sure. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. And boy, does she look good. Oh, my gosh. Love the designs. Like, I am just blown away at what they're doing. It's awesome. It is fucking awesome. So, yeah, she looks good. Now... I saw this and I was a little confused, right? Because we've seen Nebris' skill cut scene. And so I was like, wait, is this like a scene from the interaction uh, mode that they're having? But I'm like, why would they have an interaction of her crying? But then I thought about it, right? So they're giving Nebris a whole thing for like 14 days. I think this is going to be like either some side content or event or story where it's going to be like a self-insert so if you guys remember they talked about like self-insert and like a bond or dating system um and i think this is what this is going to be i think this is going to be like a event story or something like that specifically for nebris and this is going to help promote the interactive uh content that they're going to be releasing for her so i think what this is is you play this and then you also get the interactive content that goes with this, I think, right? So I think that's what's going to be the special part about Nebris here. And if that's the case, I, I really do like the layout of how they're going to do it. But we'll have to see. That's my prediction because I'm like, there's no, they didn't say anything about an event specifically for Nebris. Everything's going to be a rerun. 
unless they're holding off on revealing information for a completely new event. So I'm guessing she might have a new event and that's what it's going to be. Who knows? We'll see. But um, yeah, I think that's what this is going to be about. Let's keep going here. Uh, we got a glutty phone. Cool design. I don't know whose hands those are. Couldn't tell you, but cool. Now this. Uh, okay, okay, guys. Like this here. This here. Like if you guys aren't excited, I don't know what to tell you, man. But I'm not going to say who this is, but I know you guys know who this is. There's literally maybe... Oh, okay, so if we didn't know Eclipse already had a bunny skin, a lot of people would guess Eclipse. There's literally maybe one other girl with a body type like Eclipse. So let me know who you guys think this is, uh, think this is in the comments. Um, yeah, I am, I am blown away at the quality that they have with some of these skill cutscenes. And the fact that if the skill cutscene is bad, they will let us know and they will tell us what happened and if it needs improving they will improve it uh they will improve it so this is wild this is wild like i don't know if that's sweat or oil like i just don't know man uh, well actually you know what <laughs> i think i just gave a hint right there <laughs> but yeah let me know who you guys think this is in the chat man i'd love to hear it okay um yeah oh okay. by the way by the way Let's scroll up here real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. Because I know we're, we're wasting time here. I'm sorry. Make sure you have everything you need. Hang on. Exclusive gear pickup. Oh, never mind. Okay. Make sure you have everything you need here, guys. Because December, look at what we're getting in December. Nebris, Vanica, Anti-Dystopia and Diana. Two new characters. Limited Bunny Eclipse. Adventure Unknown Diana. Masquerade Bunny Celia. Now, I'm going to be honest. They're probably going to give a character away for free. Just like they did for this. I'm I'm completely going to be honest with you. I, if I had to guess, one of these new characters are going to be given away for free. Um, I could be wrong though, right? Uh, that's wishful thinking, but we'll see. Now, let's, uh, let's keep it going, huh? Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. But definitely prepare, guys, because this December is jam-packed. It is seriously jam-packed. All right, let's finish up here. I want to try and not waste too much of you guys' time. So, we have um, some development team's response to key suggestions regarding gameplay so they talk about how they got a bunch of messages from high-ranking guilds about changing things for like guild raid and other things so they talk about wanting to add leaderboards which i agree with uh changing guild emblems which i can agree with new achievements based on guild rankings and other achievements i can agree with that as well again you can pause and read it for yourself uh for fiend hunt they also talk about uh, better rewards for players at the top but they did say that we have decided to defer this issues because they don't want to make it um excessively competitive right now they continue with another question that was asked to them i strongly recommend that you conduct thorough tests before releasing updates for fiend hunt playing fiend hunt with bugs disrupts user experience and destroys the competitive environment which i i'm gonna be honest i 100 percent agree with here they um their patches have been a little buggy lately. Well, not lately. It's It's been buggy. And I don't know if they're being rushed or what. But if if it's interrupting Fiend Hunt, I can understand people being upset. Because they have to like change up a lot of shit and reschedule it. And it sucks to have to do that. So if they can just be more vigilant with bugs, everything should be good. Now, this right here, they um, one guy sent them a issue about not renting characters for fiend hunt or even pvp as it would destroy the single player competitive experience which i can agree with but they did say that they are review uh they're reviewing a rental system so we've received some suggestions regarding rental of friend characters um however we have not yet confirmed the development of the character rental system we'll take that in consideration and review during the planning stage so for the rental system i honestly think they should just let you rent for like pve content right and that's about it i think that'll be fine no big deal for last night someone asked if they can have leaderboards for last night um achievements for damage thresholds again you can read it there and then a fatigue and crafting and refining powder so this is big so basically a lot of players or i guess this guy said high ranking players need refining power uh refining powder 
currently the process of materials, craft gear, upgrade that gear, dismantle, and get powder is fatiguing, which I can definitely agree with. Right, so he lists a solution, which is materials to powders, right? If there's like an automation for that. The devs responded, we understand the fatigue, uh, the need to repeat the process of upgrading, crafting, and dismantling to obtain refining powder is annoying, essentially is what they say. Many within the team have expressed similar opinions. We are currently considering various approaches such as automating the entire crafting to dismantling process or adding a feature where items automatically dismantled once a uh, once upgrading is complete i like this please 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 make the whole process streamlined to where you press like one or two buttons this is huge guys i really hope they work on this because this will have so much quality of life for us um and then closing remarks um this is talking about leaderboards celebrating player uh player passion and enhancing our experience with leaderboards i guess uh and they wholeheartedly agree with this so again you can read it but yeah there's just kind of confirming what the guy said here uh let's see now okay sorry about that so let's real quick go over these are the survey results from the last survey so the first question what do you think the number of costume pickups and what do you think about the number of costume pickups in the collaboration event and then what one here that came in first was three so three is just right like we have now there were votes for four i think that i vote four i can't remember i think i voted three and then the second place was like two or fewer and they have some comments here the majority of korean users answered two while expressing their concern about increase about the increase in time limited costumes due to the nature of collab events okay next question <clears throat> which method of distributing collaboration characters do you prefer what one here is distribute one collaboration character costume that can be upgraded to plus five this got well over 50 percent i wholeheartedly agree with this this is great apparently um it was a surprise to see it doesn't m matter come in first place in english speaking regions which is kind of crazy i'm gonna be honest interesting now let's keep moving how many collaborations with other works would you consider ideal? Twice a year was number one, which I agree with this. Twice a year was definitely the majority here. Every two years is crazy. I don't know who voted for that, but wow. Once a year, I definitely disagree with that. I like twice a year. Twice a year is perfect. Now this is uh, this here, which collaboration character skill cutscene did you enjoy? So apparently Yumi came in first place in Japan and Taiwan. Yumi was number one. Not surprising. Um, hakage was second however in korea and north america hakage was first right so hikage and yumi were very close 34 percent and 32 percent for hikage so very very close but hikage came out on top uh this right here show your thoughts on invasion defense and boss defense so here are the survey results satisfaction went up and the amount of people that haven't played um went down but still to see the, the fact that over just about 20% of people haven't don't do guild raids. That's pretty interesting. That goes to show you the people that answered this survey, a litmus test to kind of the amount of people that may be actual like casuals in this game. Like they just probably play to collect because the fact that you're not in a guild when you could be getting free rewards, that's that's uh, that's something else. But yeah, uh, you can take a look at that and then they kind of go over how people are like more satisfied and how they're going to improve things uh feel free to share your hopes for the next collaboration event so people said collab with popular ips richer story content characters with various body shapes not overpowered in terms of balance re-released of uh re-release of collab events not weak in terms of balance free plus five giveaways adjustments of collaborations so they say many of the players showed high satisfaction in regards to the plus five giveaway policy. <clears throat> there were also many requests for the re-release of collab events. There were various opinions regarding performance balance, stating that characters should neither be too strong nor too weak, which I agree with. When I was going over the units, um, <clears throat> when I was going over the units like, uh, gosh, I'm blanking, Sinran Kagura units, I was saying all the time that 
it's not that these units are bad, but they're not OP either. They're like right in the middle. Um, so I, I completely wholeheartedly agree with this and they should kind of keep that type of balance for those characters, right? Then they say here in the next question, feel free to share your thoughts on what you'd like and what could be improved in the second trial of the guild raid. Raid should be easier, simplify battle, detailed participation records, relax participation restrictions, enhance cooperation tools, display rankings, increase rewards, enhance cooperative elements, improve random patterns, improve tutorials. Do you guys think guild raid is too hard? The raid should be easier and simplify the battle. What do you guys think about those two things? Let me know in the comments. I'm curious. Is is guild raid too hard? Is is the is it too complicated? Does it need to be simplified? Let me know. Um, and yeah, that's basically it for today, guys. Um, guys, fantastic dev comments. I really think December is going to be absolutely insane. And even the events after December, this is for sure after December. Um, yeah, I am super excited. Again, let me know what you guys think that these costumes are, these two here. I'd be very curious to hear what you have to say, but man oh man i don't know what i'm gonna do because plus fiving every character is just oh, it's so tough but let me know what you guys think in the comments i was my jaw dropped when i saw this whole update guys so yeah let me know what you guys think i'm out later